everybody, welcome to How I See It with Kevin Levroni, brought to you by Levroni Signature Series Supplements. There it is. Okay. We're going to have to have some sort of some sort of uh, contest where people can win some autographed crappy yours eventually. But for now, let's get Yeah, uh, like a tub of protein, you know. Uh, so we'll do some trivia questions. Ah, you know, great. like uh, some trivia questions on the next show. And, uh, you know, you guys get a free tub of protein and BCAAs and stuff if you get the questions right, you know. Okay. And we're, we're going to ask you guys, how do you spell weight room? Weight room? <laughs> Just joking. The first trivia question should be, how is your last name pronounced? Yeah. And this what argument. year did I turn pro? The year well, you turn, the, don't make them that easy. You got to make them a little tougher than yeah, that. Yeah, these are the things that they could, they could, uh, they could uh, Google. You know, it's got to be something like, uh, how much did I weigh when I won the nationals? Okay, okay. Why don't we make how that? Much, let's make that the first one. Yeah. Okay. How much did I weigh when I won my first uh, Maryland State uh, Bodybuilding championship in 1990. How much? How much was my weight, guys? That, yeah, that's that, that's a good one. That'll be a little trickier. That's going to take some digging. They're going to have to probably hire a private detective and go to Maryland and track down that's whoever right. was the NPC chairman at the time of Maryland. Yeah, uh, I think I know who it was actually. <laughs> hey, Ron. Yes. How many times have you competed? About 25. Man, really? Zero pro shows. <laughs> You really did twenty some shows on a, on a uh, amateur NPC level. Uh, from 19, 1989, I started an organization called the A and B C. Have you ever heard of that? It's long no. gone. There, it was a natural organization. Most of their shows on the Eastern Seaboard. They're long gone. Yeah. Um, did one A B C C show. Didn't do my first NPC show till ninety four. It was an Ironman naturally out in California. Did another one of those, two of those in 95, one in Vegas, one in California. I did the Muscle Beach show a few times. That was a really fun show to do. Right yeah. there, out in the open, in the sunshine, and the tourists, and the boardwalk, and all that stuff. That was a really cool yeah. show. They still do you that. You know, just, just for the guys out there listening that want to turn pro and as a professional bodybuilder, you know, I want to just tell you guys, you know, there's a lot of NPC shows where, you know, you can go and win the overall – uh, in your weight class, and that'll qualify you to go to the national or, you know, North Americans or the USA's and stuff. And, you know, it's, it's okay to, like, I guess it's okay to get a pro card, but what you want to do when I was coming up is my goal was to actually win the overall at, at these shows, you know, the overall national winner. Yeah. in the heavyweight class or whatever it was, you want to win that overall. And a lot of times the overall winner, when you shoot your goals as winning the overall, not just your class, yeah. you have, you're coming on a higher level as a pro, you know, guys. So I, my advice to you guys, just don't walk on stage uh, unless you're hundred percent with your nutrition, with your, with the way you look and with your training, you know, because every you always want to have it in your mind to win, to, 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 to win, you know, not to just go out there and, and, and just fall into placings anywhere. So keep that in the back of your mind. If you're trying to make a living at this, you want to go in with a plan, and that plan should be do everything you could do to possibly win, okay? The safe route. You know, don't, don't destroy yourself. You know, you want to be smart about it because when you do turn pro, Say if you win the overall at the Nationals or the USA's or the North Americans or whatever it is, you want to have a long longevity. You want to have a relation. You want to have a long, healthy career. You know, so you definitely got to pace yourself. And I always tell guys, you know, when you're 19 and you're 20 and you're young, you know, you're you're just a baby. You know, so be careful with your training. Be smart with uh, whatever supplements you take, and you all you you make that final decision for yourself if you want to decide if you want to get into you know, crossing that line and getting into heavy stuff. But I always say, and until you can actually train to a full potential and you know your body, and you know what you can do in the gym, and you're making all these decisions for yourself, 
and you've sat there and trained and trained and trained for three or four or five years and done everything you possibly could. do like Ron. Yeah. Well, I remember you did everything I do before you even decided. And I don't even, I don't even think you did, but you were natural for the longest time, you know. 27, guys years, just, 27 years old yeah. before I even saw a steroid. And I do know that about you. I, yeah. I definitely know that about you. So, mad respect to you. Thank you. Guys, you do not want to start taking any antibiotics if you don't know this sport, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know how your body's going to react. Save that stuff for, like, the last resort, man, the last the last thing. And don't even do it unless, unless your, your mom knows about it. Your doctor knows about it. You need to do it to last the last emergency, you know, thing to do, you know. And then you want to be so smart about it, you know. Just I see so many kids, man, just doing this stuff without just taking chances, you know. Mm. Say, oh, if I do this, this is going to turn me pro. No, it's not because you didn't even know how to train. And right. you're taking more stuff than I do, <laughs> you know. So don't do that, guys. You know, and I, I just want to put that out there because – I care about you guys, so you know there's there's a process. You know you don't want to jump into it 100. percent You need to learn about your posing. That doesn't happen overnight. You need to learn about your core. You need to learn about proper form. You need to learn about how long it takes you to rest and recover. You need to learn about your nutrition. You need to learn about first of all, you even know how to diet for a show. Mm -hmm. You know, so all these things come into play when you're trying to win a contest and be a champion and, and, and understand your body. Right. And you cannot get that drive out of a steroid bottle. I'm telling you, if you don't know all those things, put that bottle down. Don't even don't even go on those antibiotics until you definitely did everything you possibly can over years, a period of time. OK, and then you might be ready to take that step. You know, See, you're speaking from a place of wisdom and a place of experience where. And also, we came from a different era where, you know, if you wanted to talk to some, you want to send a letter to somebody, it would take you, you know, it would take you a week or two to get a letter back, whereas now everything's sexting, email, instant messaging. I think it's just a faster society now that these, this young generation lives in. And if you tell them, you know, take your time and take years, you know, you tell a kid maybe train for three, four, five years before you even think about using anabolics, they look at you like five years to them. That's like a thousand. It might as well be a thousand years. That's so long yeah. for them. So the problem is, Ron, you know, you see these guys and they, they blow themselves up and everything. There's no really quality muscle. There. There's no quality in the presentation there. They don't even know how to do quarter turns. They don't even know how to do a posing routine or hold these poses and things. I mean, you, they keep forgetting that that's, that is 60, 70 percent of it. You can be the biggest guy you want to be on stage, but if you know how to present it and you're not confident in doing it, you're not even going to win. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I mean, you're not win. I think we've so, all we've all been to shows where we see guys that their development, the physique is really good, but they just they they pose, they move like such awkward klutzes. It's it's embarrassing yeah. to watch. So you want to be a master. You want to master who you are and learn about. It your presentation to learn about what it is and what, what, what pose works best for you before you even think about an enhancement. That's how I'm where I'm at and I strongly believe that. You know. Okay. Uh, the first question actually relates to nutrition and dieting, which you just talked about. Uh, this is coming from a guy we took a question from last time, Vin, Vin seventy seven, big fan. He said, uh, "You have you said eating clean is the thing of the past, and you practice practice flexible dieting. Uh, do you, what does that exactly mean? Because you were you were always known for eating super clean, super strict during your prep. All right, what it means is my body obviously has changed. My metabolism's changed. Okay, I'm because I'm older. It's harder for my body to hold on mass." I can consume more fat now than I used to when I was 22, 23, or 24. I had to be really, really, really strict on my diet. Now, when you get older, your body, as a man, it has less fat. You ever see these old guys, 50 and 60, and they're like shredded, you know? I, so, I see a lot of older guys that they, are fat, too. Though. What they're lacking is the muscle mass and the thickness and the fullness. So I'm able to um, 
throw things in my diet now. I don't have to diet as strict, you know, because I'm older. My metabolism has changed. So I've adjusted my nutritional program depending on my body, what my body's doing today. Okay. okay. So that's me making an adjustment personally for myself. Back in the day, I couldn't do that. You know, yeah. when I dieted, I had to stay strict, 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 strict. If I stay dieting strict, strict, strict now for 12 weeks, 10 weeks, mm. I'm not going to be thick, full. Like, oh, I got to, I definitely got to have some fats thrown in there, mm. you know, okay. and that's what I noticed. That's what I noticed when I was on stage at the 2016 Miss Olympia. I'm like, man, I diet. I'm going to have to change it because, you know, I can't do the diet that I used to do. I'm just going to string me up and make me look strawny, strawny looking, you know. Yeah. The thickness and the mass that I need wasn't there. And one of those things is because of my diet. Now, are you working with anybody for the prep for the Arnold Australia that you'll be doing next spring? Or? You know, I, I want to tell you, um, Scott Rayner. Scott who? A friend of mine, Scott Rayner. Okay. Scott Rayner was in the, was in the Maryland Muscle Machine uh, uh, full-blown video back in the day. I remember um, Scott, somebody who's like a brother to me, he always gives me, uh, you know, motivation, how to train, you know, motivation to train, and as far as sticking on a clean diet, you know, fish, rice, and broccoli, simple, boom, yeah. that's what you got to do. Also, you know, back in the day, you know, I think it was after the Nationals, and junior, Todd Sweeney, you know, Todd Sweeney gave me some good advice. Todd Sweeney's old school, yeah. uh, and knowing this industry for a long, long time, he definitely is an expert on the nutritional end. Um, was there for me through my whole career. You know, he would do my body fat testing and we would uh, make adjustments for my uh, nutritional program. I think Todd is still doing diets right now for competitors and people. Yeah. But today, I'm doing it myself. You know, okay. uh, Jimmy Seafood in uh, Baltimore, Maryland supplies me with my food and everything that I need when I'm starting this prep for shows. Haven't started a prep yet, you know, right. for, uh, for, the, for the Arnold Australia. You know, I'm not going to start that till five months out, you know. I mean, we're already, this is October, that show's in March, so you've got, most guys start prepping for the Arnold shows in December. Yeah. Really. So, but just, just to back up there, Kevin, I think, you know, most guys in their 40s and 50s have the opposite situation that you're, you know, they don't have this metabolism like you. I think it gets harder and harder for most guys to lose fat and stay lean. I think you're a you're an anomaly. You're you're an exception to the rule. If I had to make an observation. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Rob. Oh, you're welcome. It's, it's a good it's a good thing to be to be, you know, have no trouble staying getting lean and staying lean. You know, I know the the mass and the thickness might be a little more challenging to, to maintain. Yeah. Because I know a lot of guys are going to hear that and go, "Dude, I'm I'm 45, I'm 50, and I can't get rid of my gut." So, what the hell is Kevin talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, and of course, all this advice I'm giving is from my experience. You know what I mean? Right, right. Sorry, that's it. Uh, here's a good question from a guy named House, whose avatar is uh, the character House from the TV show. Was there ever a bodybuilder who freaked you out genetically? The 90s had some exceptional talent in particular. Was there anyone who ever made you say, like, what the hell is this? Yeah, Ronnie Coleman. Okay. <laughs> Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman, I don't know what happened. I don't know what he did, man. Whew. I watched Ronnie grow up. Ronnie, over a night, over one year, man, year and a half. Yeah. That dude went from, Ronnie must have put on 60 pounds of muscle. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I remember going backstage at the Mr. Olympia, and I literally looked. I'm telling you, man, it looked like a silverback gorilla. And I have to say it because yeah. it was the biggest human being. It was part human, part gorilla. Wow. Okay. And I'm looking at his back. Ronnie's back is his back. Are we still here? Yeah, I'm here. I, he's froze up. I can hear you. Can you see me? I can hear you. So you're talking about Ronnie's back. His back had to be four feet wide, man. <laughs> it was, I mean, just, and it was lumps and lumps and lumps. 
and I say it because I mean you talk about and he had he had a pink or purple trunks. Yeah. That were like this big, right? Yeah. All up his butt. These little these little <laughs> things because CJ made him real small back then. Yeah. And he was just this big black <laughs> purple mountain of muscle. <laughs> yeah, I got I got a lot of shit years ago. I used to help Pony Rambot write his column, and uh. I quoted there was a there was a two part thing where Hani took a, a vacation with Ronnie him and his girl at the time, I think it's whoever ended up his wife now maybe now anyway they were on a cruise together, and uh, I described Ronnie as an ebony mountain of muscle, and yeah. Hani was Hani was quick to say that wasn't me that was Harris to put that in there, and it took me about it's been almost ten years to live down that one phrase calling Ronnie an ebony mountain of muscle. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean. <laughs> I actually told Roddy, I'm, I'm like, you know what? I know you're Roddy Coleman, but what is it? What, like, it was like, and I, because I, I remember, it was like it. I'm like, what is that thing? Yeah. I know his <laughs> name is Roddy, but what is it really? Yeah. He was wide as a refrigerator, hard yeah. as nails, veins from the back of his head all the way down to his calves. <laughs> there must have been about four or five people trying to oil him up at the same time because he was so big. <laughs> He couldn't bend over and put his own oil on. It was just crazy, man. Was this was the year? Like, was this the year he was almost three hundred pounds? Yeah, know? I was like, oh my god, this guy's gonna be Miss Olympia forever. Almost, almost. And then yeah. that's all I thought was, there's no way anybody gonna beat him. Well, you know, really, what happened? What happened was he too big. It was a point where you cross that line and your guts start going out, you know. And it didn't be, it didn't look pretty anymore, you know. Right. It got out of control. Right. You know, we're starting to see that happen today, you know, with these guys. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, does does that bubble gut thing really bother you for the guys today? It bothers me when you see somebody with a great physique and great talent and everything, and they push it to that point, you know. It really bothers me, you know, because bodybuilding is an illusion. The smaller your the smaller your waist is, yeah. the bigger the rest of your body is going to look. It's an illusion. So that's a that's the center point where you want to be the tiniest. You don't want that to get bigger and bigger and bigger every year. Yeah, you know, it's an illusion. And then you wonder why guys like back in the day, like Sean Ray, who competed at two ten, yeah, one ninety, I think. No, he was two. He was two ten as a pro. 210. You know, what beat guys like Marcus Rule and beat guys like Paul Dillette, you know, and beat guys like NASA El Somebody and stuff, you know, because right. he just had the perfect size, shape, and symmetry. And it wasn't about how big, how much you weighed on stage. It's not about that right now, you know. So my advice to these pros out there is give us that illusion, man. Bring back that tiny waist. Bring back those classic poses, you know. You guys can do it. You know, have that mass with the class. You guys are walking out there, you know, 250, 260, 270, 280, close to 300, but you're forgetting about the midsection. You know, keep that tight. You can walk out on stage 280 pounds, 360, and your waist is a 32. You know, now we're talking. We're talking about some freaks now. You know, keep in mind, Lee Haney was 240 some, 243 on stage, and his waist was at least 32. Yeah. You know, Flex Wheeler. Complete freak, you know. Waist twenty nine. You know what I mean. I mean two fifty seven at your heaviest. You you didn't have a gut. What was your waist at two fifty seven? My waist is probably about thirty two inches. Tops thirty three, thirty two. Yeah. Sometimes it got down to thirty. One year it was down to twenty nine. You know, but these guys are walking around our off season with their waist forty two inches. Sure. Sure. You know, it's crazy. You know. So what, Where's what the illusion? You, well, everyone's got their own theory. What What do you think causes these big guts? You think that it's overeating? You think it's certain types of drugs? You think it's a combination of different things? Let me tell you something. Don't nobody need 10,000 calories or 12,000 calories to survive or to grow muscle. Number one, it's overeating. You, and you're making your belly hold all this food that you don't need. You know, that's 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 excessive eating, man. And that's yeah. another reason why the bellies are pushed out, because you're eating too much, okay? Uh, another thing, I think it's insulin, probably. Yeah. Another thing, I think, is the GH, sure. you know? They're yeah. taking way too much stuff, 
and relying not they weren't about being big and, and, and bloated instead of worrying about being in shape and creating that freaky looking tie-in physiques you know that's what i think it is man to be honest with you you know yeah do you think it's too late to turn back do you think we're ever gonna get rid of all these guts or you think this is just the way it's gonna be from now on i don't think it's never too late to turn back and i think the npc is trying to do something about it you know um i think what's going to happen is people are going to start having pro shows and the pro shows are going to be classic physique pro shows how about that how yeah. about if we have a a classic physique pro show you know and um and that's what i think is going to start happening you know because yeah. when you think about it you go to these npc shows now you don't see a lot of bodybuilders on stage no more no you know i might have a leveroni classic physique all pro show with, with no open bodybuilding nope uh, well you do what you gotta do <laughs> i mean uh, what yeah, yeah i mean I, what else what else you gonna do no it's still bodybuilding, Ron. Oh, I believe it. I, I, I keep calling it classic bodybuilding by mistake because to me that's what it is. Yeah, it's classic bodybuilding. You just yeah. up the weight limit a little bit, you know what I mean? Let the guys weigh a little more. Yeah. You know? Okay. So you have a big trip to China coming up. Uh, real quick, what's, what's that involve? How many different places are you going and what are you going to be doing? Actually, I've already been to China. Um, this one coming up is uh, India. Oh, India. My bad. Yeah, I'm going to be touring India. Leveroni Signature Series is on the ground down there in India. Um, I'm just going to be touring. I've never been there before. A huh. little hesitant and stuff. You think, eh, India, you know, because you hear about such the, the gap between, you know, the rich, the poor, poor. Yeah. I love them. We're all God's people, man. God, God isn't a racist God, you know what I mean? So why should we be racist? I'm going right. to over there i'm gonna to get to know them obviously they trust and they love and they care about me because they've decided to bring my product into the country so i want to go over there and educate them on health fitness how to train um lifestyles of being healthy and fit you know and then teach them about you know my products and stuff so i'm going to be torn through india for 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 a while you know i mean i keep getting dates added on and on and on and on wow of course i hate leaving my son you know Hey, he's only what 10 or 12 years old yeah Gabe's 11 now 11 wow yeah doing good in football too boy he's he's smashing it well, he's a Levroni. <laughs> smashing it man you know um so you know i'm looking forward to that that trip man uh, i saw kai green was over there and it got a really good uh people take them really well you know well, they're, they're very appreciative because they don't get yeah, they don't it's for them to get an american bodybuilding star that's such a rare treat for them i think they, yeah. they appreciate it a lot more than americans who we have a lot and, more chances to see you, know, you guys another thing you would think india country like that is easy to get into or easy to get a visa it's not really hmm. oh man they want to know where are you born where are your parents born their names and maiden names they want to know how long you're going to be there who's bringing you over the company that's bringing you over what's their business license so they can prove that they're legitimate where you're staying, how long you're going to be, wow. who you who you're going to be with, um, just everything. You know, it's wow. it's one of the hardest countries to get into, actually. Wouldn't have to get a visa for. That is surprising. Huh. Huh. Well, I wish you an excellent trip over there. I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna really appreciate the chance to meet you and talk to you and everything. And uh, we here at MD we appreciate you having having you on this show, having this outlet for the fans to be able to interact with you get their questions answered. So far, it's gotten an excellent response, and people want to see more and more of it. So you're on the right track with this, and everyone's yeah. digging it. They're really digging it. Well, that's cool. You know, we want to lay that platform. This is a platform, not for us. It's for a platform for us to educate, give back, get the people involved. What are your goals, guys? You know, how I see it is how I see your goals, you know? So think about it. This is a tip that I want you guys to do this until the next segment. Write down five things that you want to accomplish you know the the bucket list okay five things that you want to accomplish for 2018 and i'm going to challenge you guys to take a head start now and challenge yourself to write five things you want to do and five goals and see if you accomplish those goals without dropping the ball you know because that's that's a start can you trust yourself to not drop the ball can you trust yourself 
to accomplish those goals. And we're talking about in the gym. If you want to bench press 315, set your goal to that. If you want to squat 405, set your goal to that. If you want to deadlift, you know, 405, 500, 315, whatever it is. If you want to find a training partner. If you want to, you know, pick out a show to do. These are the things that I'm talking about. And guys, shoot in your comments, questions for me, okay? And tell me your five goals for 2018. And I'll see what I can do to help you guys accomplish those goals, okay? Whether it's, I might, I might invite one of you guys to come out and train with me at Exile Fitness, you know? But when I see you're serious, then I'll make that step to help you guys accomplish your goals and get where you want to be for 2018. So this is really what this How I See It segment is all about. It's how I see you guys and where you want to see yourself five years, two years, 10 years, 20 years from now. Awesome, man. And you know all how right. we do it, Ron. Yes, sir. Boom. Sir, boom. How I see it with Kevin Lebroni. This has been Ron Harris, and we'll see you next time.